Hello and welcome to setting up a web application to use Application Insights, a part of the Monitoring and Troubleshooting Applications with Application Insights course. In this module, we will walk you through the process of creating an Application Insights instance on Microsoft Azure and how to configure existing applications to send telemetry data to it. My name is Kevin Griffin. I'm an independent software consultant and 10-time Microsoft MVP focused in ASP.NET development and deploying solutions to Microsoft Azure. It is my pleasure to teach you some of the ins and outs of Application Insights and how it can be beneficial to your projects. In this module, we have three fundamental areas to cover. First, we will discuss the types of applications you can collect telemetry data from to send to Application Insights. Next, we will walk through provisioning an Application Insights instance on Microsoft Azure. Lastly, we will walk you through integrating Application Insights into an existing application. Let's begin with the discussion of the types of applications you collect telemetry from with Application Insights. The landscape of software development nowadays dictates you don't necessarily have to be all in with a single platform. You might have one service that runs on .NET 4.5, another built on ASP.NET Core 3, and something else on Node.js or Python. For this reason, you should expect your logging and tracking systems to work across all the platforms you have to support. Application Insights has you covered. At the moment, there is built-in support for ASP.NET, ASP.NET Core, .NET Console and Service Applications, which is really any .NET application that isn't ASP.NET. And if you're going off the .NET stack, there's also full support for Java, Node.js, and Python. If your application of choice isn't on the list, you're not completely out of luck as the Application Insights team is always looking to extend support to new languages. These SDKs assume you are going to add Application Insights hooks into your code directly, and this is definitely the recommended path. However, there are cases where you might want to add basic Application Insights telemetry without changing any code. A solution for this does exist if you're running on Azure Web Apps. Application Insights can tie directly into an Azure Web App and pull telemetry from it. There's also an agent-based solution for servers and virtual machines running IIS directly. The number one question we get about hosting Application Insights is, does my application need to run on Azure? Or can Application Insights support on-prem services? Feel relieved, because the services do not need to run on Microsoft Azure to take advantage of Application Insights. As long as your application is able to talk directly to the Application Insights injection servers, you can track telemetry. While the majority of this module will focus on a code-based approach to configuring and using Application Insights, there are possibilities where you want to get the bare minimum without modifying any code. The Application Insights agent can be used with any IIS installation you have, whether it is on-prem or hosting in a Microsoft Azure virtual machine. This utility, which can be downloaded at the URL below or with the Web Application Installer, can quickly review every site currently hosted in your IIS instance. Individually, you can configure these sites to report their telemetry to Application Insights. I've successfully used this tool on two 15-year-old ASP.NET 2.0 applications that were scheduled for rewrites. We were not in a position to edit the code directly, so this tool gave us the ability to get some insight without having to touch the source. It is worth noting, though, the Application Insights agent is limited in the data it can collect and report because it is only tied into IIS and not the application code. With the default agent installation, you will have access to incoming HTTP requests. So you'll know which routes are being called, how long the actions take, and what their response status codes were. The application insights agent can track out calls and external dependencies as well. If your application talks to a SQL Server database or other web service, this will be tracked. The Application Insights agent can track and report any unhandled exceptions. These will be status codes that would normally return an ASP.NET error page. If you have logic in your application that swallows exceptions or prevents the exception from flowing to the top of the execution stack, 
Application Insights might not be able to track those for you. These cases are reserved for code-based Application Insights hooks. And lastly, the Application Insights agent can easily tap into the performance counters of the machine IS is running on. Before we can begin collecting telemetry in our applications, we need to provision Application Insights. Creating a new Application Insights instance on Microsoft Azure is pretty straightforward. While many services in Microsoft Azure have dozens of configurable options, all you need to do with Application Insights is choose a name and a region. While you might have services in many different regions, try to choose a region for Application Insights that is the same to your primary servers. One common question I get is, can I connect multiple services to one Application Insights instance, or do I need multiple instances? This is a fantastic question, and the short answer is you only need one Application Insights instance for all the services in your environment. Let's look at an example here. I have three web services, all a part of a large system. One might need to talk to Azure SQL Database. Another might need to store something in Azure Blob Storage. Since all these resources are related to the same ecosystem, you only need to stand up one Application Insights instance, and they can all report to it. If you're creating Azure infrastructure from the ground up, the marketplace wizards for several types of Azure services will ask you if you want to connect to or create an Application Insights instance at the same time. This can be very useful because it saves you a little bit of time during integration. Once you've provisioned your Application Insights instance, you'll be presented with the overview dashboard. It will initially report no data and that's okay. In this demo, we'll walk through a process of provisioning a new Application Insights instance. Creating a new App Insights instance is pretty straightforward. I'm already logged into the Azure portal. And as you can see, I've already created a resource group where all my different resources are going to live. Now I'm going to go up to the Add button. And in the Search the Marketplace box, I'm going to type in Application Insights. I will press create. And as we mentioned before, the process for creating a new application insights instance is pretty straightforward. You need to make sure you have a subscription selected. Make sure you have the right one selected as well. Select a resource group or create a new one if you don't already have one created. And give your instance a name. Usually I like to use the name of the system that I'm going to run application insights against but it's really up to you so i'll call mine skill me up app insights and as you type this in you'll see you'll get a check on the right side of the text box that just makes sure that you're within the certain limits of an app insights name next you need to choose a region you have all the regions that azure currently supports to choose from i suggest that you go with a region that is going to be close to the resources that you're monitoring. Uh, for me, that's going to be out of the East US Data Center. So I'm going to select East US. Now, if you're taking advantage of tags with any of your other resources, this is the appropriate place to add additional tags if you want to. You don't have to, it's not required. We'll go to the next section, which is Review and Create. And during this time, a validation sequence is run on everything that you typed in just making sure everything's valid because you really don't want to find out you had an error at the time you go through the creation cycle uh, looks like everything was valid in my instance so I'll press create and we'll wait a couple seconds and as you wait the deployment screen will come up just telling you everything's happening behind the scenes this could take a couple of seconds. It could take a couple of minutes. It really depends on everything happening underneath the scenes at Azure at the moment. When your deployment is complete, we can go to our resource and success. We have a valid application insights instance that's running. Take note of your instrumentation key because you might need this for configuring your SDK later on. 
I'd like to show you another process for creating an App Insights instance. And this will typically happen if you're creating your own web services, app services, uh, Azure Functions, or anything that could potentially send telemetry data to Application Insights. So back in our resource group, I'm going to say Add, and we'll type in Web App. And for fun, I'll just type in some fake data. Uh, when you're selecting your runtime stack for your application, you need to ensure that you choose something that can run under Windows. The app service integration for Application Insights relies on a Windows-based operating system. That doesn't necessarily stop you from using Application Insights uh, in your application code, but if you are going through the process through the Azure portal, you need to ensure you have a Windows based operating system. I'll select East US for my region. We'll have it create a, an app service plan for me. And then we'll go to monitoring. And as you can see under monitoring, it's already pre selected application insights for me. If I already had an instance of application insights, I could choose it here and Azure would automatically link it together. Or I can create a new one from scratch, which is doable as well. You can give it your own unique name and you can choose a location. Again, we'll ignore tags. The web app will verify that everything I typed in is correct. And then I'll hit create and we'll sit back and wait a couple minutes for the deployment to occur. And through the magic of editing, you didn't have to sit through that process that took about four or five minutes, but instead we'll go to the resource and we'll see, I have my app service up and running. Everything's great. I can click on application insights, which will give me a little bit of information about my application insights instance, but I can go view the application insights data and it takes me to my newly created application insights instance. Again, a different instrumentation mm. key. The other thing I like to show you since we're talking about integration with existing web apps is if I go back to my app service and go into configuration, we'll see that some application settings have already been predefined for me. In particular, there's the App Insights instrumentation key and also an App Insights connection string. So if we look at these, we'll see they're set to the instrumentation key that I, I just saw on the other screen. So all this together helps you configure any service that you have up on Azure against Application Insights. Next, we'll discuss integrating Application Insights into several types of applications. Most commonly, you'll use Application Insights with .NET-based applications. Because of that, there is first-class support for integration within Visual Studio. But you don't necessarily have to use the tooling to get the job done. If you were to walk through the process manually, you'd see that the tooling is simply doing the following. First, it's ensuring you have the Application Insights instance provisioned on Microsoft Azure. Next, you can manually install the correct NuGet packages for Application Insights. This will depend on if you're running .NET Full Framework or .NET Core. And finally, you can manually configure to let Application Insights know what your instrumentation key is. This ensures all the pieces are in place to collect telemetry from your application in production. Why don't we take a few minutes to see how this is done? In this demo, we will discuss integrating Application Insights into a new or existing ASP.NET Core application. Now, it's likely you've already 
know how to create applications in Visual Studio. So I'm going to kind of gloss over this information, but I'm in Visual Studio 2019. I'm going to create a new project. In particular, I'm going to create an ASP.NET Core web application. Now this will target ASP.NET Core 3.1. I'll create a standard web application. And the biggest reason for this is that it predefines a couple different pages just so I can get some initial telemetry without having to do any real work. We'll when our application is created, you'll see I have a couple different options to me on this overview page. I'm interested in connected services, and you'll see that at the very top, we have monitoring with application insights. Clicking on this takes me to an application insights configuration wizard. If I press get started, it will ask me for my current Azure credentials to make sure I have rights to create app insight instances. You have to select a subscription and then a resource group if you don't already have one built. Now I don't have an existing resource group for this demo. So I'll create the, the default one, Web Application Sticks. If you press Configure Settings, you can change any of this information. So we'll do that. We'll just call this Griffin Test 001. We'll call the App Insights resource Griffin Test 001-AI, Application Insights. We'll select the location of East US. That's the data center that we want to be in. And press OK and then we'll click register. Now what this process is doing underneath the scenes is that it's going to Azure, it's going to allocate our new App Insights instance, it's going to take that connection instrumentation key, bring it back to Visual Studio, it'll install the proper SDKs for ASP.NET Core into our application automatically, and it will do the proper setup and configuration for application insights telemetry. Now this process can take a couple minutes, so sit back and relax. And through the magic of editing, here we are. Everything is said and done. We have kind of a confirmation page where Visual Studio is telling us that all telemetry for our application is getting sent to Griffin Test 001 AI up on Microsoft Azure. And it's also going to pull data back from that application insights instance and report it to us inside of our diagnostic tools and inside of code lens. So pretty, pretty cool. The next thing I want to do is publish this application up to Microsoft Azure so we can see some real telemetry going through it. I'll right click and publish. I know you're not supposed to do that, but we'll create a new app service on the fly. One thing to be careful of here, because I've made this mistake many times, is I can get the subscription right, I can get the resource group right. Uh, I don't have a hosting plan, so we'll create that on the fly. But you'll be tempted to select a data center here for application insights. You don't want to do that. And the reason for that is that it would create another application insights instance for you and not the one that we just created previously. Don't select that option. We'll hit create. With our app created, we'll hit publish. And when everything's successful, our app will render and we can go back and forth between all the different views. Now, if we go into the Azure portal, we'll see our resource group. We'll see our application insights instance and then the web service we just created. However, there is one little disconnect. You'll see we're not registering any requests or responses within our system. And that's because we have not configured our app service to talk to application insights. There's absolutely no data in here. So how do we fix that? Well, it involves us going back to Visual Studio and in our published wizard, there's a section called dependencies. 
I can add a dependency for application insights. Now remember, we've already walked through this process and we've already created our application insights instance. But if we hadn't, we can now go back and go through that process again. But here, I'm gonna select the instance I've already created, hit finish, and we'll see that application insights is already linked to the instance that we've created up on Microsoft Azure. And what this is going to do for us is insert those connection strings, that instrumentation key that we need in our app service to do any sort of telemetry tracking. I can hit publish again. Our website will load. And I can switch again between the different instances. Now, if I switch back over to App Insights, let's refresh the application settings view. I do want to continue. And you can see we now have our instrumentation key. We now have some profiler information, our agent information. So everything should be working accordingly. Now, it's important to note as well, if you are integrating ASP.NET, ASP.NET Core into a system that isn't on Microsoft Azure, it's on you to make sure that these environment variables get set within your IIS instance. Uh, these variables get read by application insights during the startup of your application. And one of the steps that we didn't see before because it was all behind the wizard is that this line got added to our startup.cs file for adding application insights telemetry. This takes care of wiring up all the endpoints, all the dependency tracking that we need to, to report on. And everything just magically works. Let's go back to Application Insights. Go to our resource group. Go to our Application Insights instance. And you'll see we're starting to get some data because the graphs are starting to render. Now we don't have any failed dependencies. We don't have any availability tests. So right now we're just looking at server response time and server requests. You can see we have a couple. And if you just switch back and forth between a couple different views, this will make those numbers go higher and higher. And these views update automatically as people use the application. But if you want some live metrics, over on the left sidebar, you can click on Live Metric Stream. This takes a couple seconds to connect. But as people use the application, you'll see the number of requests coming in will go up. The memory CPU utilization will go up, but also potentially failures and exception rates will go up as well. Let's go into our application and switch again between a couple different views. and switch back to Application Insights. And you'll see that our request rate peaked a little. Each one of our requests took somewhere between one to four milliseconds. And there was a little bit of a tick in memory and CPU. As our applications get a little heavier, we'll see a lot more action in this particular view. But that's all you need to do to integrate ASP.NET Core or ASP.NET with Application Insights. If you have services that are not .NET based, you're still supported by Application Insights because SDKs exist for a half a dozen platforms. The tooling around these SDKs are not as polished as Visual Studio, but that's because Microsoft isn't controlling them. That's okay. Integrating with a non .NET platform is straightforward and similar to the manual approach you'd use with .NET applications. First, you would install the appropriate SDK. Since each platform is different, check out the Application Insights documentation for the platform you're installing for. In our example here, I'm looking at the NPM package page for installation into my Node.js application. Second, you configure Application Insights to connect with your instrumentation key. This data would come from the configuration files or ideally environment variables, but this will ultimately be determined by the platform itself. 
Let's walk through an example of installing and configuring application insights into a Node.js application. In this demo, we will try something a little different and discuss integrating application insights into a new or existing Node.js application. For this example, I've already taken the time to create a very basic Node.js web server. I'm using the Happy Web Platform to do all my web work, but this will also work with Express and other web platforms already built on top of Node.js. The next step is to install the Application Insights package for using Application Insights. Lucky for us, this package already exists and it's officially supported by Microsoft. We can install the SDK by using NPM. Here's an example of installing the package into your application by using NPM to install the designated by the I. Application Insights is the name of the package, and I'm telling it to save to my package.json file after installation occurs. Back over in my server code, I want to add a couple lines for setting up application insights to send telemetry. Now it's a good idea to set up application insights as early in your application process as you possibly can. This ensures that anything that possibly goes wrong at the beginning of your application can and will be captured by application insights and sent back to the main process. The two lines of code I've pasted here the first one is pulling in our application insights package. We need to establish some setup criteria, which is simply telling application insights what our instrumentation key is. Now I'm just putting it in here as straight text, but you could pull this from an environment variable or a configuration file. That part doesn't matter. Now by running setup, a lot of default telemetry collection is enabled for you by default. The one thing that I want to override for this particular demo is live metrics. By default, sending to live metrics in a Node.js application is disabled. So I have to add an additional line to re-enable it. When all my configuration is complete, I can say start and application insights will start collecting telemetry. So let's save this app and go out to the command line and run it locally. With our application running on localhost 3000, I'm gonna go over to the Application Insights portal and see if we're getting any data. I'm on the portal overview screen and you can see so far I don't have any data coming in. That's because I haven't done anything. So let's switch over to another tab and we'll go to localhost 3000, which is the URL for my application. Uh, we can see I bring up hello world. I'm gonna refresh this page a couple dozen times just to get some traffic going through our web server. And switching back over to our portal overview, you can see I have a small spike in the server request that tells me that I have some data coming in. That's all good. I can also switch over to the live metric screen and see I'm getting data on all the requests that are coming in. Now let's change this up a bit and go back to our app and we'll send a message to our random number generator. It returns a random message. And I go back to the live metric stream and you'll see that random has appeared in my list of sample telemetry. And if we go back to the overview screen, there's still some server requests. And we will try our last example, our last endpoint, and we'll go to localhost slash throw. And this throws an internal server error. But if I go back to my live metrics, we see it pops up as a 500 error inside of our application. 
And when it updates, you can see a blip here on the screen because we had a failed request that comes in. So there you go. We are successfully tracking basic telemetry with a Node.js application with just a couple lines of code. We just finished walking through two examples of integrating application insights into new or existing applications. But just because our demos covered ASP.NET Core and Node.js, don't forget you can instrument any code as long as there is a supported SDK for it. And file this under a lessons learned the hard way. Do not use your instrumentation key in local development. We've accidentally put instrumentation keys in shared configuration files for our team, and all of a sudden we've learned debugging telemetry was being sent to our production application insights instances. Learn from our mistakes. In summary, no matter what platform you're currently developing for, it is likely that application insights already has an SDK available for you. Microsoft Azure makes it quick and easy to provision new application insights instances. And depending on the environment you're building out, you probably only need one instance of application insights to collect all the telemetry you need. And we walk through examples of integrating application insights into existing web applications on different platforms. Existing tools make integration low effort, so you can get back to what really matters, writing code and providing value. Thanks for listening to the setting up a web application to use application insights module, part of the monitoring and troubleshooting applications with application insights course on skill me up. My name is Kevin Griffin.